Can the cheapest version of the MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2020 be used as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. Oh, there's too much. There's too much. I can't slam it. Down. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So it's no secret that I love the MacBook Pro 13 inch. This is one of the standards in the kit here on the Everyday Dad. And when the 2020 model came out, I just I knew we had to make this video because I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, this has the the base model. It has the older chips. It's not going to be powerful enough for my needs." So let's find out. I use video editing as like an example, like a way to show just how powerful devices are because it's pretty intensive task for both the CPU and the GPU. So this is the base model, the cheapest one you can get. Let's start some video editing. Now there are a few accessories you're gonna need if you wanna video edit on the MacBook Pro 13 because the problems are there are only USB-C ports. Thanks. Thanks, Apple. So we are gonna use the USB-C to SD card slot to import the footage. We're just gonna take a regular, like the unboxing video we just did yesterday. We're gonna import that in here, do some editing and see how it works. So we're gonna use this. And then if you wanna use like a big monitor, like can you see over here? I don't like editing on just a little laptop screen unless I'm traveling. So we will also be using the display connector. It's got the USB-C for power. It's got the HDMI and USB-A if you have other things to connect. So this will be what we use to connect to the monitor. And something else we're gonna do so that we get a really clear picture of what the MacBook Pro 13 is, we're actually gonna be capturing and recording the screen from here using this external device. So the laptop itself will not be using any power to record a screen. And you might be wondering, Everyday Dad, Gary, why didn't you do that for the MacBook Air video? Because for some reason, this device would not recognize the MacBook Air signal. I tried for days to get it to work and I just couldn't. And then I was like, well, let's see if it works with the MacBook Pro 13. I plugged it in, worked first try, so. Okay, so let's plug everything in. That's always the, the first part of any journey, especially when it comes to technology, is plugging everything in. And it works, hooray, Who, hooray, it actually um, worked out, so awesome. So the editing program that I use for my Macs is called Final Cut Pro X. It is an expensive pro thing that you do have to buy, but I've purchased this once two years ago, and I've never had to buy it again. So I highly recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend Final Cut Pro X. You get the updates as long as you have it, and there's always significant updates coming out. So we already imported the files from yesterday, just to make sure that we didn't have to go through all of that today as we set all this up. Here's Final Cut Pro X on a MacBook Pro 13. Looks pretty smooth. Uh, we, as you can see, there is no stuttering so far. The real, the, so editing comes in two parts, right? There's the cutting, which we're gonna be doing here in a second, and the rendering. Now, I used a MacBook Pro 13 base model last year as my only editing computer, and it worked perfectly fine except for the render, which we'll see here in just a second. So, we've got this now. This is 4K, 10-bit footage from my GH5. This is the 150 megabits per second codec. So this is actually, this is the toughest file that I currently have to edit with. You could use something like the 400 megabits option, which takes more space, but is easier on your editing rig. Okay, and now the moment of truth. The computer that started it all for me here. There might have been a couple of dropped frames in there, but I can't tell. Could you, could you tell like, Hold on, let's turn that off. Um, I'm not seeing any slowdowns. I'm not seeing any stutters. It's just scrubbing through the timeline. Like that's here, we'll pick right over here. And we will do some follow-up videos where we see just how powerful this thing can be. This is an i5 chip. There might, this is it's slowing down a little bit. Core. It's slowing down a little bit on the drop frames, but it's nowhere near as bad as we saw on the MacBook Air. And that's not surprising. The MacBook Air had a dual core i3 processor. This is a quad core i5 processor. It's not the beefiest processor that you could ever have, but I'm not seeing really any issues right here. Like the scrubbing's perfectly fine. We'll pick another the random spot. The only real thing that upgraded on this that I really care about is the typing because I I do love typing. So no, this looks perfectly fine. Like that's one 4K 10 bit clip layered in there and it works. I see no issues. There might have been a little bit of slowdown, but if you pause, so when you're editing, at least the way that I edit is there's always a lot of like cuts and pauses and turns anyway. So you wouldn't necessarily see that much of an issue. Now we've got the main clip and we've got the overhead clip. So two 4K 10 bit files um, on top of each other. So we'll see how does this, let's get this uh, show, rotation 180. Cause you want, you want your hands to be like in the right position. 
Um, so let's see, now that we've got this on top. The day they announced it just a few days ago, and now it's here, I can't believe I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any real slowdowns. I'm not seeing any drop frames. There, it could be happening, but if it is happening, it's happening so, like, so minusculely that I can't tell the difference. Um, now one of the things that you could do to help yourself out here, if you did want to make it even better, um, you can see we've got it set to better performance, and media is optimized slash original, or you could even set it to proxy to make it better. But when you have this set to optimize original, you can see what it's doing right now. Every time we pause is it's rendering optimized media in the background. And what that does is it makes it so that it's copying the footage that you imported into a lower quality and it's showing you the lower quality. So it's easier to edit. But then when you hit render, it renders it with the original files. I normally don't do that because it takes up a whole bunch of space. And as this only has a 256 gigabyte hard drive, that's a lot of space. We won't do that right now to put this to even more of the test. One, I love Final Cut Pro X because this is a eighth generation chip and I'm not seeing any problems here. This is integrated GPU. There is no dedicated GPU on this thing. So let's add my correction. I don't call this a color grade because I don't really add much color to it, but you look at the waveform over here, saturate to taste. Let's make this a little smaller so we can actually see what we're doing. Saturate to taste. Now, something that I've started to do is I like my skin tones to be a little, a little bluer, a little bluer. We'll just move that a little bit. Okay, so this footage is good. Here's what it looked like originally. We'll go up to color board. And then here it is with my little, I don't call it grade, with my little bit of color correction. So we've added the color correction. We've seen the scrubbing works perfectly. We've got two layers. Let's add the third layer and see what happens. Can we break the MacBook for video editing? Now we've got the third layer. So this angle, the top angle, and the main angle, all 4K, all 10 bit, all 150 megabit per second footage. How is it now? If I want a big giant desktop, I'll just cart around, I'll get a big, I'll get like a big- I do see a lot more slowdowns now. If you can see like the hands here, they're slowing down. Um, but as, like we'll skip forward ahead. The fans definitely kicked on now, and there are definite slowdowns. Three layers of 4K 10 bits seem to be just like a little too much for the MacBook, because I can hear the fans, they're definitely starting to kick in. How's the heat? It's starting to feel a little warm. If you're only doing two layers, we saw that it worked perfectly fine. So let's, we've got this, let's cut this down to a five minute clip that we will eventually render. And I don't ever actually set my clips to just play. So even if there's a little bit of stutter, even if it looks like it's dropping some frames as you're editing, I, I mean, it, it's up to each person's individual workflow, but I would be perfectly okay with this. Because if you've seen, and maybe we'll do like a full dedicated video to my workflow on how I actually edit this stuff. I have a pretty strict timeline for how I do all this stuff, but I edit off of like 10 second clips. So I'm not actually looking up here. I'm looking down here at the audio waveform because that's what I actually edit off of. Um, because that's, I find it easier because I'll probably have made a mistake and I'm like, okay, I remember I made a mistake. So I can just cut stuff much quicker that way. So the, the dropped frames don't bother me. They could bother you depending on your own personal workflow and how you edit. So let's add a few extra things. We already did the color correction. We added the three layers of 4K footage. Let's add a title or two. My very first ever um, MacBook was the MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2015 and my wife still uses it. Lower thirds, loading basic lower third. Thank you, MacBook Apple. Gary is the best. So is 30 frames per second. Okay, so we added our title, we added that. Can we do some? Here, let's add some transitions, maybe some effects, and then we will, we'll do a cross dissolve because everybody loves cross dissolves. Apple didn't send this to me. I pre-ordered this Woo, thing. woo, cross dissolves. We've got a timeline. We've got it set to five minutes. I have, I think this looks perfectly fine. So master file, we will render in, we won't, we'll set it to computer. We'll set it to H.264. We'll set it to faster encode because of this machine. We'll set it to 4K. It's a one gigabyte file. Let's get a timer going or stopwatch. Why do I always call them differently? Why do I say it different? Okay, you can see and start. So we've started rendering. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Now, one of the things that I love about the iPad that we currently have controlling the camera is it renders in faster than real time. And when I have to sit here then, I don't have to sit here for that long. The MacBook 
Pros, uh, especially the base models, do not render in real time. So we'll pause uh, through the magic of video editing. It's like that's what the video is about. Uh, through the magic of video editing, you don't have to sit here the whole time. I'll sit here. And since my phone is the stopwatch, what am I going to do as I sit here? All right, we'll be back. We're at 20%, but something I do want to bring to your attention. You can def, can you hear those fans? The fans definitely have kicked into overdrive on this thing. Like, it's working. It is working. Okay, okay, back to the end. Okay, and we're back. We are now at 95%. Oh, I guess we just jumped from 95 to done. And we are at 7 minutes and 19 seconds. We're, this is a 4 minute and 56 second clip of three layers of 4K 10 bit. 7 minutes and 19 seconds, so a little, so like twice of real time almost. And that's, you know what, for a travel laptop, especially the base model, that is very respectable to me, and that's totally usable. It took us like 20 minutes to do the three minute clip from the i3 processor in the MacBook Air base model. I think you could absolutely use this as your only editing computer. And spoilers again, I used last year's model of this as my only editing computer for like four months, so I already knew this was gonna happen, but I wanted to prove it to everybody on the internet because I love the MacBook Pro 13. It's actually my favorite computer that Apple makes. I would love to have a 14 inch version that comes with a dedicated graphics card. But I think this is the best buy that you can get on the Apple ecosystem. It does great for photo editing, does great for video editing. It's small enough to just be used for regular stuff around the house easy to travel with, and yes, it can be used as your only video editing computer. And if you're curious, if you want to see what faster looks like, the iPad Pro actually edits and renders faster than that. And if you'd like to see a video of me proving that to you, you can click right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.